Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Pleasure to be here with you today because today's show features Amira Hall, and she's going to show us how to reset from manifesting. We all love that. And yet manifesting, it's in a whole new place. We're in a whole new place on this planet. Our skills are in a whole new place. We're being ascended as we speak. Many of you feel it physically, emotionally, and so forth. So that's going to be the conversation and way more of what she's capable of. This show, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show, Top Ranking in Self-Improvement on Apple podcasts. Also, Welp Magazine listed it as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work. You can take a class or become a facilitator. Go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R dot com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I am a coach for spiritual messengers. I'm a book writing coach, and I show you how to take your book from its idea to its completion and have it published. Also, I turn your book into an international guaranteed best-selling book, and my company does all the work for you. And finally, I teach you how to become your own publicist and not only learn how to book yourself on podcasts for great visibility, but also how to become the number one authority in your field. And it's everything, including the coaching when you're on the show, what to do after the show, and how to get a yes and where the right shows are for you. I've got a free gift for you so you can learn how to become way more visible in all of these realms now. Go to Debbie dashinger.com slash gift. That's D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. So indeed, my guest today is Reverend Amira Hall, and she is a manifestation mentor, a near-death experiencer, author, speaker, psychic medium, medical intuitive, and healer. She is definitely multifaceted and she has overcome adversity to become a spiritual guide and a medical intuitive. Amira's expertise in metaphysics, combined with her unique combination of talents and experiences, makes her a valuable resource for those seeking spiritual guidance. She's an accomplished author of five books. One of them is Love Up Your Life. Another one is Manifesting Miracles. Aren't these beautiful? I love the colors. Manifesting Miracles 101 with practical advice and guidance. And I'm going to give you the other one because it's just so pretty. <laughs> and this one is Vibe High Mad. And watch the magic unfold. I mean, oh my God. So this is everything. For everybody who needs to stop working so much and just... Like it's got beautiful sayings on all the pages and you can color them in if you like, or your child could, or you could act like a child and let your inner child out. If you want to learn more about her, you can go to amirahall.com and that's spelled A-M-I-R-A-H-H-A-L-L.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Mira to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you finally here on the show. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Yes, I've been looking forward to it. We connected so long ago, and so this has been a date worth waiting for. I want to get started with the manifesting because I know people love this conversation, and I'm interested mostly in the new way, right? Not the goal-setting way, which I know you're not about anyway, but really about what is the new manifesting method technique? How can we as ascended beings work on it in a 5D new modality? That's a great question. You know, I'm working on it every day. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, as, as the planet and the consciousness and the vibration is rising, so are we, correct? Mm -hmm. And then what happens is our spirit is actually separating from the body in a way, especially if we've got unfinished trauma or emotional baggage or any kind of fears or worries or uncertainty, all those low frequencies, those low vibrations actually not repel, but it, it pushes away the spirit. The way I see it is we have to 
we're learning, you know, work in progress. It's a constant practice to clearing those energies, bringing the spirit closer to the body, being grounded and present, being aware that we are this human ex having this experience, but we're the spirit. And so when those two parts of ourselves come together closer and we can be fully present in the moment, that's where the magic happens. That's where the thought creates and you can have instantaneous experience of your manifestation or within minutes. And it's an exponential process and it doesn't take really any labor. It doesn't take even knowing all the skills I talk and teach people to because we're so fully in alignment with our higher self. Yeah. And okay. Our, our, our guides. You, so what you just said, you said uh, what you teach to people, and I know you have clients and groups and so forth. So how do you help people manifest what they want? So let's say somebody comes to you, gosh, there's so many examples, right? Somebody, there could be a career somebody wants. Maybe they want to shift their finances. Maybe they want to shift what's going on in their body health-wise, or maybe they want a relationship or, right? Or they want to write a book <laughs> like you did. So of all the things, they come to you and they say, Amira Hall, I need help. I really want to manifest this. What would be the steps you'd show them? What are the techniques that you work with? Well, the, the most interesting thing that I picked up when you just said all those different experiences, almost every single person that comes to me and says, I want to create this career. Funny enough, it's spirit guides me to actually clearing energy that's not related or so they think to wh why they want to create. I would say that a hundred times out of a hundred, we need to clear something that's impeding our ability to manifest. There is some energetic block. There is some energetic, call it a mental or emotional, call it a fear, call it mom's energy, call it something from our experience from birth to now, or even a past life, that energy has to be cleared. And quite honestly, I don't do really anything other than help people release, help people release some of the unconscious energy that's preventing them from stepping into that alignment where the magic happens, where the miracles happen every day, every minute. And so it's a flow. I think the more we can clear, release, let go what we're not, we can step into that superpower, aligning and trusting and knowing and, and keeping the vibration high. That is the secret. So, you know, the very, 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 very first thing we learn, because nobody knows how to do it is grounding. A lot of people that I encounter say, oh, yeah, I know how to ground. I ground. But meanwhile, they're thinking of 15 things. They put their keys down, went into the bathroom and forgot where their key, where they put their keys down. They're not present. Yeah, they, I want to address what you were saying before. Just to concur, when you were talking about the first thing you do when somebody comes to you, because the obstacle in manifesting is something that's going on energetically within us, you know, and and it, I would say like four months ago and before as a metaphysician working in this world, I would have said, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I would have gotten it here. But now I I am, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually four months through my shamanic university school. I have two more months to go. And it's been so profound because I'm learning these processes to do on people. Exactly what you're saying. It's everything from extractions to cord cutting to way deeper. And I'm seeing things that are amazing in people that I'm taking out to help them. And of course I get to work with other students and they are doing the same for me. And I'm seeing, I'll go a whole week and all of a sudden realize, ah, oh, there are huge changes happening for me. There are tremendous shifts because of that exchange I did with that other student and what they removed from me. And I am loving this process. So I have to say, I know intimately now in a different way, what you're talking about right. and how important that is. And because you know, most of us, it's like batting your head against the wall. You're trying everything right. Exactly. And, and the pattern repeats and, 
And I just want to say with great love, it's, it's, it's often, it's way beyond subconscious. And like Amira said, yes. past life, multidimensional life, you know, somebody could have uh, been sending hatred your way or anger or trauma that somehow got crystallized or embedded in you or an entity. Interdimensionally is accurate because as multidimensional beings of light, we are, we're crossing many barriers. And so a lot of healers don't really understand that. I don't think they can really, I know a lot of people are, are being like time jumped into understanding this, but, you know, quite honestly, this whole awareness of being grounded, I've worked with many people who've been long time on their path. And even after we finished my 10 weeks of mentoring, and then a month or two past that, they'll be, I don't know, vacuuming or doing some dishes. And they went, oh, I just felt it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now I know what you're talking about. So it's not something that is really, you could talk about it and talk about it till the moon is blue, yeah. but it's an experience. And again, it's all about clearing unconscious levels way beyond, like if you imagine an iceberg. It's not at the top of the iceberg, which most of us in metaphysics have been dealing with maybe an inch below the water level, but this is going way down. One of and my interesting issues right now with manifesting is, um, and I think I have gifts in manifesting, like real co-creator gifts, but <laughs> I get in my own way. And so uh, this is just a, for instance, because I have a feeling lots of people will resonate, but to pull back the curtain, I'm going to be doing this webinar coming up on how to be interviewed. I work with spiritual messengers. Now doing the webinar, I love, I love, right? Connecting with people, I love, I love. But the whole back end stuff, uh -huh. and so what happens is I get overwhelmed in my head and I think, oh my God, I got to figure out like, you know, sort of an agenda. You can't just show up for an hour and, you know, you have to know where you're going and what you're going to share. And I want to give people a gift for coming. Like there's all these pieces. Then I know once that's complete, I need to figure out copy, right, for a landing page. And, and uh, so people can register for it. And I got to write that up. And then I got to hire someone from okay. Fiverr. And then, right. And then what happens here is I'm like, uh, and I'll push it off every day from my to-do list. Would you like some help right now? Yeah. And I want to say I've already. Okay. I, I had a shift recently where I felt I just shifted into the. Uh, finish line, in case this helps somebody, I went to the finish line and felt what it will feel like all the bennies I will get, all the new people I'll meet, possibly new clients, all the people I'll get to help. Once I got in the excitement of that, I'm like, I can do one thing at a time. Yeah. And I have been making headway, but I would love more. So I'm, well, I'm a yes. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's create this little uh, snapshot of creating anything. This is, this is a foolproof tool that I use day in and day out. Okay. Right. So imagine putting your masterclass, that whole concept that you just described of everything in it. Okay. And we, I like to use symbols prefer, I prefer a symbol that's universal. And that to me is a rose, right? Everybody can relate. And I've got clients around the world. So when I say a rose or a flower, they get the same picture. So let's just, let's everybody think, and everybody who's listening, think of something that you would like to manifest. In your case, Debbie, you've got it real crystal clear, the, you know, how you want to help them, the program, the more or less, okay? You got that, that whole thing? All right. So then beside it in your mind's eye, imagine a gauge and it could look like a fuel gauge or an odometer on your car. And it's, there's a little needle on it from zero to 100%. And ask yourself, and no cheating, what percentage does that mock-up of your desire look like you can have in this moment that you could receive it? So it's really funny. It looks like a car that's sputtering. It's going from um, the little dial goes to 50 and then sputters up to 75 and then 50 and 75. Right. It's shaky, right? It's on shaky ground. But now, and it could, yeah. So I could analyze that for you and tell you why, but that's not even relative, right? It's like, I like to bypass all of that analytical part of where we all get tangled up 
and you're no different than me and everybody else, right? We get in our way. And so with that in mind, it's not at 100. So looking back at that rose or that symbol, whatever symbol comes to your mind, begin imagining you've got a psychic sponge and you can start absorbing any energy on there from other people. It could be other people that I'm are- sorry, can I get clarity? Any energy from the rose or from what am I sponging from? Well, your mock-up, your desire is dropped inside the rose. Okay. So that's your mock-up. And so what we're going to do is absorb or clear off any energy that other people other than yourself might have on that rose. It could be your tech team thinking about what work there is. It could be people that would like to attend, but the timing is off. It could be people that attended other trainings and whatever the, it could be so many factors. Just, we just want to clear or absorb, pull out any energy from other people that are interfering with your desire coming into fruition. And you just let me know when you feel like that's complete. Yes, it's complete. Okay, good. Now I want you to clear out with another psychic sponge so you can let that sponge disappear and then another sponge to absorb and remove any energy you have on that desire, your fears, your worries, your um, all the work. Oh my gosh, I'm at work. Oh, when am I going to have time? It's going to be so much fun. So it's not about negative or positive. They're all feelings that are impeding that uh -huh. creation. Wow. I just literally saw my mouth open. It's coming yeah, that's so this. cool. Yeah. So the, sometimes we see some real funny pictures doing this. It's really cool. And, you know, to be playful with it to pretend we're in kindergarten and there's no coloring outside the line or there is lots of coloring outside the lines. Yeah. We just get to make it up and follow spirit and have fun with it. When we, the less serious we take this, I think the more powerful it becomes. Great. I'm complete. Great. Now looking at that gauge that you had earlier, mm. where's the needle pointing? Ah, now it's going between, uh, 80 to 100, 80 to 100, right. 80 to 100. So it's still wobbly. Yeah. Okay. So give that um, gauge a cord or a tube, hook it to the center of the earth, mm. just in your mind's eye and see that grounded. There's that word grounded. And what this happens? Is amazing because I, I've, you always think of grounding yourself. I never thought of grounding energetically something I wanted to create. Hey, I ground my taxes every year It's because I hate doing them, right? So I put them in an imaginary bubble in the side of the room and I just ground them. So I discharge all the energy that blocks me from getting to it. Yeah. So what happens to the gauge, Debbie, as you do that? Oh, yeah, definitely creates stability and yeah. uh, I like calm in the, the yeah. <laughs> in its space. So it's not quite looking at a hundred now, you know, because it involves other people, we want to live, give it, you know, between 95 and a hundred because everybody has free choice, right? We're, we're not impeding on anybody's free choice or forcing anybody to do anything that we don't want, but you can ask the gauge, is there something that the gauge wants me to give to it? So rather than taking away, is there something that we would deposit in that gauge to bring it to 100%. And what do you see? Wow. So first of all, that is so brilliant, Amira, because I teach my book writing students the same thing. It's every time they come into a block, I have them connect with the book and have a conversation. And they love this exercise. It was a big breakthrough. So I yeah. so get it. What you just did is brilliant. And um, so it, it was like, and you know, and I think I intuitively knew this anyway. And this is the problem also creating an agenda. There starts being a boom, boom, boom. Like I, I'm not a stiff person at all. I'm a like, very free flowy. And um, so it it said you, you, 
Like you, you know, you're doing a great job at copy and you're doing a great job at, you know, knowing technically where you're going and all this stuff, but really what it needs is you, right? Your love and being, and being present Yes, with it being present. So you can drop in the letter, you know, Y O U into that gauge. You can drop a picture of yourself into that gauge, whatever that looks like to you. Beautiful. All right. Oh my God. That's so good. And, and then we're going to roll up that gauge and we're going to drop it into that rose or that symbol. And this is where you can step into it and, and feel it like it's a room and you just walked into it and experience that gratitude and experience that joy and the fulfillment and the, the applause. And, and you can also give thanks to the creator at this point for having this creation right here, right now. Oh my God. This is beautiful. I hope everybody out there is doing that for your own dream. Oh. Yeah, my heart's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's very cool. And so then we want to step out of it. So this is like in real time, you created this. And the quantum field, it exists. You brought yourself into alignment with it. And so now as you step out, you can do a couple things. Sometimes I bring it into me. I reach out and bring that symbol right into my body. Or I, I snip it off and I let it rise up into the manifestation realm. I let go. This is the other key component is letting go. And a lot of people just keep digging it up and rehab. Well, it hasn't come yet. It hasn't manifested. And you can't, you know, I caution you not to dig it up and redo it and redo it and, and cancel it and make another, because you're not trusting the universe. You're not trusting God. You're not trusting yourself. Instead, if it doesn't manifest within a real, you know, let's say in a week, you don't see some progress. I would clean it off. It's simply calling back this already created manifestation and just do the whole exercise again with the, um, the gauge and cleaning it off and release it again. Oh, Sometimes well, that happens. Yeah. That was so beautiful. And I am very, very, very grateful. I really felt that so strongly. And it started to connect with another manifestation in the rose, rose by the way, favorite for flower, true mm -hmm. story. And um, I've been asked to speak on some huge stages and, you know, they're coming to me and asking, and it involves travel and it's, it's a big deal. I'm very honored. And um, I'm going to be speaking because I've always spoken about visibility, but I'm going to be stepping into the UFO, the metaphysical, the shaman, and that's the conversation I want to deliver. So there's a lot of new stuff for me. And before we started, you said psychically, I already got that you're reaching for the stars and that you're really changing a lot. And thank you, because it's so accurate. And so that was also in the rose. It just showed itself to me that moment. And it was more owning. It was no effort. It was just like ah, embracing. Being yeah. all of you and, and being in that grace mm -hmm. of receiving. And so, you know, I often look at the having gauge as we looked at that, but there's also another component to this and that's receiving, you know, a lot of us can't receive our good. And there again, it comes back to what do I need to clear? What trauma, what belief system, you know, emotional baggage we're hanging on to, um, like you, I'm going to be speaking on a stage this, um, summer, I was invited to speak at the International Association for Near-Death Studies. Mm -hmm. So at their mm -hmm. annual conference, and, you know, I've held myself back from speaking on stages, but it's, it's, I think no matter what, whether you've had a near death and you talk, you can connect, whether it's in a shaman, shamanic journey, um, as we're advancing, as we're elevating our consciousness and the frequency, we have to learn how to manifest in a whole new way. And that more than ever is requiring us to be present because we can there, get this out real easy. Are there different tools um, manifesting in a new way? Are there uh, quantum energy tools that can be used also for the health, the wealth, the relationships and so forth? Well, that again, are different? It, com it comes back to grounding. It comes to us being present. The mm -hmm. next tool that I teach in terms of tapping into our intuition. 
so that we can see clearly is being able to be in the center of our head and knowing how our spirit, if you think of Hawaii, your spirit just goes there. As you talk at the UFO conference, we all just went there. Oh. The International Association for Near-Death Studies, we just went there in Washington, D.C. So, But we have to learn how to stay present because our spirit is adventurous. It's creative. It wants to you know, explore, whereas our body needs to feel safe. So as a human, having this a spiritual being having this human experience, they don't real, they're not really talking to each other unless we've got that click and the, the body feels safe enough to then trust this new information that's coming in. So whether it's to, to, for our channeling or for its manifesting, we're, we're kind of being held at a higher level of responsibility. Mm. You know, as you soul sisters and soul star seeds are here to have this experience of a spiritual being having a human experience and and stepping into our superpowers, how can we do that if we're not aware or present? Mm. How does it really translate to fulfilling our heart's desires? And this is the thing that I see struggle so many light workers and healers really struggle with is truly manifesting. Yes. Because it's not, it's a, they tend to be hit and miss. It's not a consistent pattern. And that's why. And nobody's taught us how. So, you know, <laughs> we're learning. We're learning. Yes, absolutely. I know also um, you talk about the importance of visualization. And I wanted to ask you for people, my visualization is hit and miss. I don't think that's my strong point. S certainly sentience is my strong point. Um, and possibly, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what my strong points are. But my visualization, sometimes uh, I got I got nothing. Like it just doesn't happen. And sometimes it does. So for people whose visualization that is either not a sense that works for them or also is, you know, not their strongest, is there a way around visualization that we can still create this potency? The way I see it is we have all of these gifts, all of these abilities, every one of us. And, you know, you can write, you, you, you know, you learned to write in school. I learned how to write. My handwriting might be prettier than yours. Why is that? Did I spend more time? Did, was I more creative? You know, I'm not saying that is true, but we can develop this. And that's the problem. Nobody's taught us how to develop. You visualized a rose. You simply closed your eyes and you saw that rose. That is clairvoyance. Now, the point of all that is most of us, it's very, very common clairsentience, which is clear feeling. That's using our second and third chakra. The claircognizance is also very common, clear knowing. It's the clear audience, the clear hearing, and the clairvoyance that most people haven't developed. And that's exactly what I teach people, how to get to those levels. I feel clairvoyance is one of the highest abilities, not only for healing, because we can dial into it when we can see specifically what we're looking at and use a particular tool to you know, advance it or, or give us more information. In fact, remote viewing is basically clairvoyance. That's but amazing. it's usually, I think it's also using more analytical, whereas in the work I do is, is it's, I don't know, I'm going to say it's university level, but we play in like we're in kindergarten. So when we can relax and play and have fun with it, our spirit communicates in pictures. That's it. Got it. How, what is your success rate in helping people who feel they're non clair I haven't had anybody in my trainings not develop their Claire. In fact, one student I had from Saudi Arabia, um, I was living in Dubai at the time, and he approached me. He was already a healer, an energy healer, and he wanted to develop his clairvoyance. So we did the whole program, and uh, he he we had our, our consult after. And I said, so I don't feel like you're happy. You're not really content with the results of this training. And he goes, Yes, that's true. He was very polite and sweet. And I said, well, 
I think we need to give it a week or two or, or a month. Just, just let's simmer because the way I see it is you're in such an incredible growth period. You know, all the moving parts are still settling and you're still growing and settling and growing. And it's a, so he, I got a call back about three weeks or so after that. And he says, Amira, you're not going to believe this. I'm seeing the organs in my clients' bodies like it's wow. a video. Really? So his perception of what clairvoyance was going to be for him, he mm -hmm. thought he was going to see like I saw. And quite frankly, every person I work with, there's it's a little different. And I can teach you tools and step-by-step -step to expand it. But at the end of the day, it's you, just like with singing, Debbie, you develop your voice, right? You develop your style in presentation and delivery and how it works for you. And it might dovetail, let's say, with your shamanic background or some of the other healing modalities. All of a sudden things start, you know, um, whipping around and, and, and you just take it to a whole new level. Mm. That's what that's about. Yeah, thank you. That's so right. That's really a nice thought too. So you can, you have a hundred percent success rate. You can turn this on in people. However, it manifests differently. Our, our blueprint is different for well, however because, the Claire is meant to be. Well, because of the perception of how our, we believe what is true or the way we see things. If, if we all look at a painting and you say to me, well, I see the reds and the blues. And I'm like, I see the yellow. Mm right? We see things different. So that is naturally going to be translated also yeah. into the clairvoyant space. Is there such a thing as uh, selling, manipulating energy? And if so, how can we use that? I'm not sure I follow you. What do you mean? Manipulating? There was something I read about on your website about selling, manipulating energy. Does that make sense? Well, what I don't, I guess I'm going to perceive that is in when somebody's selling something or if there's a program out there, they can use energy to manipulate and whether or not you can see that, that it's a, let's say an, uh, an advertisement that everything looks great, but in, in reality, there's some underlying energies that are trying to get you to do something, but it might not deliver what you want. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And I see a lot of that. I see a lot right now, especially within the spiritual community. There's a lot of uh, wonderful healers that are coming online and, you know, package up some trainings to, you know, go out into the world, but it's not all what it's being made out to be. 100%. I, you know, I work the Conscious Life Expo, which is girlfriend, you've got to go. You've got I've to come. Been. I've been, yeah. I mean, you need to present oh, <laughs> next yeah, oh, yeah, February. Yeah. It's amazing. 15,000 people through the door and they're all us, right? Yeah. And um, you go booth to booth to booth and boy, I don't know, just for me, it's a crapshoot. I know some people may love it. There's like, so for instance, there's a psychic, whatever he is, who is there every year. And I finally thought, this guy's here all the time. There's always a line. I got to experience him. And he was a chunk of money. And I threw it down right away just to get on his calendar. I have to tell you, Amira was one of the worst readings. I was sitting there. He was so sure. I looked just like uh, one of the housewives of Beverly Hills. I don't remember the name because I don't watch those shows. And, and from <laughs> that, he said things about me, but there was nothing that was... Um, full of detail or it was so milky toast. And I sat there and went, what a waste. It's my time is what it is. It's bullshit. bullshit. And there's so much of that. And I have people calling me. One lady said, oh my God, this person wanted to, me to send the thousand dollars and they needed new drapes and a new TV. And I had this horrible spell on my family. And, oh, oh, yes. ever gonna have. and right. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Amira, I, I had a hairdresser once. And I mean, these are intelligent people, like beautiful people. And she was working with someone who was milking her drapes. And I remember her this is years ago, she was working on my hair and she was telling me what she was paying this person. And I was like, stop, stop right away. This is a scam, my friend. Oh my gosh. She realized well, it. And, and, you know, unfortunately <laughs> to this day, there's still a lot of spiritual people playing this game and I call it a guru game. Mm. And I don't mean 
So, so the way the game works is if you become a teacher or healer, you have an energetic cord to your students mm. and it connects to the crown chakra, crown chakra. And so what happens is then you have this following and they don't know that they're being directed by this crown chakra and under the control, like you have to do everything that they put out. You have to buy every book, you have to go to every event. And so, yeah, I, I get that you're a fan, but there's a control mechanism happening. And so what happens is they're not helping you in that case, access your higher self or, or other higher levels beyond your higher self, even an ascended master, you're having to go through them for your answers. And that's unconsciously, of course, but it's, that's how they control you. Right. And so I, come see Amira people, or me and we'll do some cord cutting for you. So you don't have to go well, through and, that and anymore. Be, and, and more than cord cutting, what I teach people is how to get to the core. There's a picture, there's a seed that's been planted and that's how the mm. cord keeps creating. If you don't know how to cr uh, clear the actual seed where that cord attached, that's you might have to continually repeat and cut and cut and cut and cut. Yes. And so if you have an affinity for it, that's the other thing. Somebody yeah. can completely clear you, but you still have an affinity for that. You can recreate. Because you haven't cleared the, what I call the original picture. Mm -hmm. It could have been when you were five years old that you weren't picked to be on the team or your sister left you behind and, and you, you couldn't go with all the friends. Whatever the, the picture is, is still there. I call it a picture. It's a snapshot. Mm. And so that energy continues to create. And then what I also do is go through the timeline and mm -hmm. connect up any of the points that are interrelated to that to get all of it. <gasps> I love it. Okay. Ooh, okay. So like... it's, it's again, it's, and that may take two or three goes because we're interdimensional beings. Yeah. And so multifaceted, inter you know, so back to the guru game. This is what is going on too. And people just get sucked in through the misinformation of the, of the, what, what I want to say, like back to the website or programs or underlying manipulative energy, that's a manipulative game. And so people aren't learning or being able to access their true higher self. So in, in my trainings, I teach people how to separate their energy from their teacher. I'm calling my energy back for my students all the time. Mm -hmm. I pop in, they might say, gee, Amir, mm -hmm. I felt you standing right next to me today. They, they feel it. I pop in and I pop out. I am very attentive to keeping my energy clear from them because that gives them space to develop their own uh, spiritual strength and presence. If somebody else is in your energy field, you can't be present. There's, there's no, there's only room in this physical body for a mirror. When I'm acting out or doing, having weird behavior, then it's because there's other entities plugged in or other energies that aren't mine. Have you ever had a drink? A drink. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you, you notice how your personality changes. Uh, our spirit steps aside. Our, our complete soul self steps aside. Maybe may another aspect to us. And they don't call it spirits for nothing. Right. Because we're, then it's like a, a rotating door and they're going, hey, Amira's had a drink. Open. Party on, I'm down <laughs> at Amira's. Yeah. So that's what, and drugs too. And, you know, so, you know, just like, you know, yeah, we'll leave it there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a big wrap. That's a deep rabbit it's, hole. It's a, yeah, it's a deep conversation. Um, you communicate with entities beyond this reality. Is that correct? Yes. Can you say who or what the entities are? I communicate with um, the Arcturians. <gasps> Um, I call, it seems to be a collective to me, but I identify it as a singular. So it, I call, and all I could see was blue faces. So I just call it blue. That's, that's my, like our, our familiar name. And so, yeah, they first came to me when I was walking a golf course in, um, Dubai. And, uh, it, they, it seems like that would be my little secret time where I would connect go, okay, I need a sign. And they would come in and give me some information. Yeah. And what is that relationship like now? What, how do they help you? How do you connect with them? Are they your family, your star seed family? 
I, you know, I always felt like I was from Sirius. That's where I kind of kept them at bay, just sort of like looking at this, you know, trying to figure it out. What exactly do you want from me? But it's all about teaching. It's about teaching humanity. I, I feel like they've been with me since my, my near-death experience. And I feel like there's, there's others. There's the Sy Syrians. And I have a being that, uh, well, this famous, uh, you know, Lee Carroll channels Cryon. Yes. Cryon energy has been with me since 2000. And that's the, I, Cryon comes to me as a healing master. So whenever I have a loved one or somebody in my life that's struggling, I send Cryon energy. And so, um, so it's, it's incredibly powerful, but I don't channel it the same way Lee Carroll does. Truly, truly for healing. That's spontaneous. Um, I, you know, beings, you know, our loved ones from the other side come through all the time for me. Uh, and sometimes I'm channeling, um, uh, I would say, a collection of light beings. And several times they've come through and they haven't given a name. They just told me that they were the brothers of the of the galaxy, that they were helping facilitate the shift in energy. So, you know, I, I kind of say that um, the big part of my work, though, has been to help people have what we've come here to create. Not to get. I love talking to extraterrestrials, ascended masters, but I'm constantly being reminded that the work is happening here for us to integrate our spiritual essence and awareness to manifest here in the now. When we connect with many of them, we leave the body and we leave, we leave present time. Mm -hmm. And so that's the part I struggle with. Yeah, my, my curiosity, it's a fascination, but it's also very seductive and it takes us takes me anyway, off of where, what I'm supposed to be doing here. You had a lot life-changing, being-altering experience, your near-death experience. Will you unpack that a little bit? Will you share generally what happened before, during, and after, and how you became who you are right now? Sure. Um, thank you. Before you know, there was a moment when I hit rock bottom. Have you ever hit rock bottom? A few times. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's, it's not fun. Um, yeah. My dad died. Mm. I was going through a divorce and that was all within a few months of each other. And then I was diagnosed with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. My doctor told me, this was when I was living in San Diego, to go home and prepare my affairs that I was dying or I would end up the rest of my life in a wheelchair. And so, and I was pretty, pretty, pretty low, pretty depressed. And then when I thought that things couldn't get worse, I got fired from my six figure job. And so it felt like my entire life was unraveling like a thread in a, in a fine sweater. Um, one, you know, just completely destroyed. So what happened is that I spent the next seven years making drastic changes in my life from my physical health. And I started studying the ancient mystery schools um, and that's, but there was a fascination for me about what happens when we die. And so I then was nudged to go to Egypt. And so I went on a spiritual journey to Egypt. Now at the time I had a six figure job. I was in, uh, t it's easy for me to say, technical sales or sales and technology. And I went on the spiritual pilgrimage and it was there outside the Valley of the Kings where all the ancient Pharaoh's tombs are that I had my near-death experience. And what happened was I felt myself hurling through the cosmos towards a familiar blue small planet it was off in the distance. And it was the sound of these Arabic voices that were working, served like a beacon that was showing me where I left my body. And it was really, it was very difficult. It actually felt like I was trying to put on wet clothes. Mm -hmm. It was um, unsettling and it was painful to try and get back into my body. 
that I struggled with. And thank goodness I had an Egyptian friend with me that day that nurtured me until my body and my energy was restored. But the whole time I was just feeling this incredible bliss and love, pure love that was, I was tethered and I was untethered at the same time, if that's possible. But at the same time, I was starting to see these otherworldly beings and hearing things that, and seeing phenomena that defied explanation, it felt like I had stepped into the, the cantina scene of Star Wars. So it was a, a very unsettling um, time. Um, and, and, and slowly I made my, my way back to the US that day, actually. And it was that part that was actually the most shocking to my body. Um, as it, it started to wane, However, I started to see things that other people did not. And it was very unsettling for me. I could hear things that other people couldn't. And so previous and to this, you didn't have psychic abilities at all? I, I would say I was intuitive. Mm -hmm. But keep that this in mind, it was in 1998 and I was in the corporate field. Mm -hmm. So I would have intuitive hits. I'm a Cancerian. I'm probably one of the most psychics in Pisces and Scorpio. But, but, the, but it wasn't validated. It wasn't validated. In fact, it was more invalidated for me uh, going through all my work career or um, growing up. Now, I had a grandfather who used to read his tea leaves every single night after dinner. And, you know, that was never, ever discussed in my family. Oh, grandpa's just looking at his tea leaves, right? But I did have visions when my great, um, not my great, my aunt passed away. She was a nun. She would come back to me and say, just tell me that it was going to be okay. Before my grandfather died, I was getting visions of him in the dream, showed me that he was going to go one way on the path, and then I would be taking another. So I had a lot of experiences like that, but there was nobody in my family that validated it. Oh, no, you're just imagining. Oh, you've got a great imagination. You know, that was that was how it was validated. <laughs> yeah. So I was really good with art. I was really good with people. I could sense things and know how to do the right things at times. And but it, it was sort of just a hit and miss. It wasn't I didn't realize how strong it was, perhaps. And you had an experience uh, of the all that is in the milieu of everything that occurred for you. Can you share that experience? Yeah. So what happened, it was like, as I came back to the US and I could, I was really freaked out. I withdrew. I went to about oh, a dozen psychics. And just like you, you go to different ones and they tell you something different. And I was getting really ticked off. Right. I wanted to. So I kind of surrendered and just said, okay, I got to figure it out myself. I'll just, you know, but I came across one healer that told me, oh, Amira, you've got stuck energy. And I'm like, hallelujah, I'll do anything. What do I need to do, right? <laughs> I just, I want to be out of this misery. I just want to go back to my six-figure job. I was doing great, right? Career was great. It didn't quite work out like that. But anyway, I was actually in LA. I went to the book expo and I was on a massage table after a grueling day, you know, perusing all the books. And um, I had a spontaneous out-of-body experience. In that moment, I was given a tour of the all. They told me I couldn't stay. But because for, for a good year, I had been asking, where did I go? Where did I go? I wanted to know. And I even talked to a shaman, not, well, he's a shaman, but he's a, they call him a sheikh in Arab culture. And I said, where did I go? Did I die? Because this was before internet, really. There was no books on near death. You know, he said, my dear, he said, you didn't die because he thinks I'm going to be underground, right? You went very, very, very far. That was his explanation. So I was getting closer to it. And then in this experience, I was shown where I went. And I literally, I remember seeing, standing in front of this grand uh, corridor with doors on either side of the corridor. To this day, I think it was like the Hall of Records. Or And, and so I entered and my guide told me, you can enter any door you like. So I took the easiest path, <laughs> don't we always? <laughs> I went to the right. It was a gold door. I, I went through the door. I didn't open it and 
It was like I merged through it and I stepped into what was like, a. this is the best I can describe because words truly elude me for this. It was like a moving kaleidoscope of color and patterns. And at this, I was merged into it and with it, it felt warm and it felt soothing and it felt um, protective. And I said, where am I? What is this? And my guide said, this is the fabric of all creation. This is love. Oh my you gosh. Oh my gosh. Say more. And, so, and, and of course I was told that I couldn't stay, but I was just like, oh, just immersed. Imagine being back in the, the womb of your mother, right? That, that just such a yummy. Well, and then I was just rudely transported out. Like it was just, you know, a real slam to my spirit. And then I was like, oh, oh, that was rude. <laughs> then I was in the corridor one more time. And I asked to go across the corridor, stepped in through this pink door. And it was this opaque emerald green. I said, well, where am I now? And they explained that, and sh well, I actually got a review of my life. I saw a timeline with my life where all my emotions had literally created all my dysfunction, all the destruction and the dis-ease. And so I learned from that moment that everything was energy and it was emotionally attached and I had left a string of it and that was what was causing my current issues. And so I knew in that moment, I when I w went back, I was to detox the emotions, detox the physical body, and I was responsible for all that. And I was responsible for what I create, that everything is energy and I create with my energy. That's wow. All. <laughs> That's all. Just, just hanging out with the vibration of love and God <laughs> yeah, yeah. and being given a review so you can come back and yeah. literally, should you choose and you did, you healed everything. Oh my gosh. And yeah. what a journey that must have been to... Um, you know, because I have a lot of compassion. Um, it's not easy. That's a lot of unwinding to do really a lot of lineage as well uh, for anybody. And we're all so different in how our emotions are. I'm a Cancerian too. So I feel so deeply and my moon is Scorpio. I feel so deeply. Oh, see, I knew I could see the Scorpio and the Cancer. Yeah. Well, and so, yeah, I didn't know that my emotions were a superpower. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, yeah, I was always told as a little girl to stop crying or quit, snap out of that mood. But unbeknownst to me, I was absorbing all the dysfunction in my family to yes. heal it. Absolutely. Right? As, as star seeds, as light workers, unknowingly, that's what we're doing. We're these little sponges and we're just absorbing it all. And, uh, and yeah, so I had to unlearn that. And that's exactly what I teach people is how to be a sovereign unit, your own soul vibration, and to separate from other energies in the way that you're healing yourself. It's not that you're separating and isolating from other people, but Debbie's energy for her body, Amira's energy for her body. Right. And then we come together and we can appreciate all of the richness between us but my energy will corrupt your hard drive huh. in your body and your energy will corrupt mine. So if you think of it as a malware or a virus, it will think snafu and short circuit things. So then guess what? We're not manifesting what we want because these foreign energies are interfering and taking precedent. Yes. Wow. Especially when you're a sensitive and empath, yeah. it's like, yeah, it's very powerful to maintain your own space and energy and sovereignty when someone else is going through something and you can sense it. Yeah. So, yeah. And so how do we, how do we navigate that? How do we not take it on and support them in healing? You know? And so that, those are all the techniques that I teach is so that we're not losing ourselves, rather than we're gaining ourselves and, and being responsible for our power. Because when our energy literally goes into somebody else's body or, or aura, that we're literally making them sick. Yeah. We Absolutely. can hold the space for them to heal. 
And there's power in that. I mean, in a way, the way, the way you describe it, it's like a 12-step program. I know in 12-step programs, they say uh, about somebody who's an addict, right? You can only help them so much, but at some point you have to completely detach because quote unquote, this person, the addict has their own bottom. And I think that is powerful. That's saying I'm getting out of the way. They haven't hit it yet. And it's the same for whatever people are going through. You want to love them. You're going to support them any way you can to the exception of yourself, right? And your own uh, emotional health and any toxicity is just not okay. When you have a very clear understanding of your own frequency, as an empath, I know when something else enters my energy field, mm. I'll feel off or I'll get confused or I'll get distracted mm. and I can sense it, but I also have tools to release it. See, because this, this is foolish to think that you can surround yourself with white light and that's going to stop everything or a mirror. That's absolute BS. Maybe it was our younger versions of ourselves that thought that we could do that. Energy is constantly moving. If we're interdimensional beings of light, how in the hell are you going to put up a, a, you know, white light to just block it? In fact, what white light does is it's a giant pause button. It is so strong that our physical body can't hold white light for very long. It's that kind of short circuits us. Now, gold light, yes. But that's the problem is people are bringing in this white light. Guess what? You're just pausing everything and nothing's happening. So if you want to manifest, it ain't going to happen with white light. Oh my gosh. I so understand everything you're saying. I love it. I love it. Um, and my dear, I mean, there's, okay. The next place I want to go is how can people connect with you? And, and if anybody are these books on your website or should they're they go to Amazon website. and how can they work with you? Yeah. Um, I, they're on my website that you can go and get those and also on Amazon. So yeah, they just Google the name or Amazon, the name and and your programs too, they're on, so her website is Amira, M-A-M-I-R-A-H. Of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, or if you're watching us on my Spotify channel, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, you can see us and our names are right there at the bottom and you can see how her name is spelled, but is A-M-I-R-A-H, Amira. Hall, H-A-L-L. That's her website, amirahall.com. What does Amira mean? Princess. Oof. Were yeah. you born with that name? I was born with the name Deborah. And I, Deborah was queen, right? Yes, that's my born name. So I stepped down. I stepped down and that was a big shift. Um, it was a great shift because I thought princesses, I, I never did it for that reason. Don't get me wrong. It was a spiritual name by a spiritual teacher that gave me the name. He said, you should be using the name Amira. I thought he was out of his mind. But just before I went to the trip to Egypt, I heard a voice saying that you should be using the name Amira. And that's when I used the name and everybody loved it. And everybody met me with it by the name of it. And I received all these gifts from all the Egyptians. I'm like, I'm loving this. <laughs> that's when I stepped into manifesting, you know? And so I thought princess is cool because you know what? I don't have to carry around the burden of the world. I just get to live a good life. <laughs> and everyone yeah. loves a princess, right? And the princess yeah. is always happy in the end. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's what how it language came. then is Amira. It's an Aramaic name, mm. Aramaic. Yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of Arab all Arabs have that name, but there's Jewish people with that name. So it's Aramaic from the time of Jesus. As I like to point out, I'm not picking favorites. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Amira Hall, what do you next dare to dream? This is dare to dream. What are your future dreams and goals? Well, I am launching a brand new training called Amplify. Amplify your intuition and manifesting. And so I'm going to take people through the journey of not only learning how to read using their clairvoyance, um, but also manifesting. So just as we did today, that's like a, an example. We are healing ourselves with every reading that we offer and every process that we're, we're, we're creating. So that's that's a new, exciting venture. The information's on my website under the training. Um, what else? Um, 
I thought I might be taking another trip to Egypt this year, but that's on the back burner for 2024. And I would say the next big thing is that uh, National Conference for the International Near-Death Studies. In October. Yeah, we're going to see all of that. We're going to see your scale and the roads and, and all the manifesting oh, and yeah. sending you so much love for you yeah. to just be absolutely dynamic and share from your heart. And who knows, maybe your Syrian family or the Arcturians will show up and help they've, guide you. I they've believe- got their, They've got so their fingers in it. <laughs> totally. I believe that, that that's, I mean, that's what I got when you were sharing that, that it isn't actually taking you off track. They are so helping you. Like this is a master team assisting you, um, not always consciously, but that, you know, you have a good team. And you don't even pay them. So <laughs> kudos. I, I would like to say that they paid me. Mm. And last November, we were in the Great Pyramid. We had private time for two hours. There were only six of us up there. And so as we're chanting Ohm in this mega amphitheater, like in, in terms of sound. Um, so what was happening is I, I really felt like we opened a portal. Mm. We were, I was just pouring my heart out in that space. And we were, I felt like we were all levitating. I mean, it was an incredible experience. We came out and one of the ladies had injured, she fell and, and hurt her knee. She couldn't climb up to the top to the King's chamber. She, about 5.30, 6 o'clock, she op opened her eyes and she looked up into the sky and there was as clear as day, these golden stars in the shape of the Pleiades. And she snapped a picture right out of the bus. But I mean, I've never seen that so clear. And so it was like, we literally opened the portal and it was like them flashing their lights showing, hey, you did it. You know, it was awesome. We did it, we did it and we're with you. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This went so fast and I'm oh. just grateful to be connected with you. Thank you, sweetie, so much from my, all my heart. It's been a real joy. I end today's show with this quote from Stephen Richards. All things that exist form an endless area of quantum energy with infinite possibilities waiting to happen. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Like, comment, I read them all. Next week on the show, yay, is going to be the amazing Rob Gauthier, formerly known as Treb Channeling. Rob Gauthier channels over 100 ET consciousness publicly, including RD Treb as well as Arc. Angel Metatron. If you love this show, tell your friends. We always appreciate it. And remember, don't just dream, dare to dream, and then use the technique over and over that Amira Hall described earlier so you can help remove any of the obstacles from without and from within in order to properly manifest. Thanks for joining us today.